Daily Graphic starts this morning and says Mahama touts Ghana's successes at the UN General Assembly. It comes with a photograph of President Mahama uh, addressing uh, the meeting uh, yesterday. The Ghanaian Times also carries that story and says poll will be free, fair, President assures at the UN Assembly meeting. And uh, Cocoa Board secures $1.8 billion for cocoa purchases and said Tekpe warns colleagues. The BNFT says lack of regulatory body hinders cashew sector. The story on page three of the newspaper. The business finder Ghana's inflation doubles in four years. Government poor policies to blame. And stock market only three out of 36 firms post uh, growth. The Daily Guide says Mahama shares cash for votes. It comes with a photograph that's uh, on the front page of the paper. Uh, you need to take time to take a look at that photograph, not too clear. And the Independent says Ejako endorses Nanado, cites economic hardships as grounds for decision. The Daily Statesman, Akufado, can offer superior leadership. That's uh, attributed to Professor Ade. These are the papers before me this morning. My guest this morning to do the talking to my extreme uh, right is the founder of the Youth Enterprise Development Network, Kasisi Riki Pepra. Good morning. And hope you're doing great. I'm doing well, like Thanks so is. much for coming. And then to my immediate right is Dr. Francis Boatin. He is an energy expert. Dr. Boatin, grateful for your time too. Thank you very much. And to my left is the uh, chairman of InvestPro, Nana Fedua Achima Pambo. Good morning too. Good morning, Bryce. I hope you're doing great. Very well, and you? I'm great too. Thanks so much for coming. Let's start with uh, the president address at the UN uh, yesterday. And uh, the Daily Graphic and the Ghanaian Times have uh, the stories. Uh, the Times says, poll will be free, fair, and uh, Mahama touts Ghana's successes at the UN Assembly. A quick read through of uh, the Daily Graphic story. It says that the president, Mahama, uh, took to the world stage, that is the 71st United Nations uh, General Assembly, to tout Ghana's diplomatic democratic and economic strides and told his peers, I am proud of my country. Now, according to the paper, the president said we have not looked back since the adoption of the 1990 constitution and uh, successive elections with power occasionally swinging between opposing political forces have established Ghana's democratic credentials in the world. Now, on economy, the president says that the economic strides the country had made, he said, bold measures in effecting structural reforms have yielded a more stable and resilient economy with a deficit of GDP target of 4.9% uh, 2016, among other favorable uh, target. He also talks about the currency, which he says um, is stable and therefore uh, business confidence is rising and foreign direct investment uh, remains strong. Uh, the president uh, talks about other issues, including the elections, and says that this year's elections will be free and fair, and Ghana will maintain its position as one of the most democratic countries in the world. Ricky, let me start with you. The president addressed uh, the UN General Assembly yesterday, and, and uh, he talks about so many things, key amongst them, uh, assuring a free and fair election, and also the fact that Ghana's uh, economy is uh, resilient, and he says... He's building on that. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, I watched snippets of the president's address of the United Nations General Assembly yesterday. Mm. And what struck me foremost was that he appeared to be very, very easy in his skin. He was comfortable. I'm sure the practice has uh, uh, afforded him that comfort. He was confident. In fact, I was happy. Our president did not seem to be um, Coward or intimidated by the presence of other world leaders. Mm. And for me, that, that, that is very, very instructive. But apart from his poise, I also liked the, the delivery. It was something that he obviously had worked very hard on. And I must say that it was a very masculine rendition. Um, he seemed to be looking the world in the face. He was telling the, fa the world that we do not want um, gifts, we do not want your aid. What we want is a fair chance at competition, especially when he was talking of uh, the Western uh, subsidies for farmers and how it impacts negatively on our local industry. And it is only fair that uh, he mentioned the elections and the fact that he believes that they are going to be free and fair. 
without doubt, Ghana has distinguished itself as mm. a, a leading democracy in the world. Uh, albeit that when we are at home, we tend to, uh, they say, familiarity breeds contempt. So I think in all in all, uh, I, I was very, very impressed about this delivery. When it comes to the resilience of the economy, I have had a particular uh, debility in analyzing economic issues. I do not possess much economic knowledge. I would usually just, um, uh, should I say, use the layman's assessment and what we call in Ghana, money in our pockets. Mm. Sincerely, there's no money in pockets, at least not in mine. But what is, what is uh, gratifying is that there has been some significant improvement in terms of um, the, the electricity crisis, and I'm sure that that will uh, reflect, maybe Nana will be talking about that since it's an investment. It will probably uh, reflect positively in terms of industry. Some had to be closed earlier in the year because of the doom, so probably they are, they are reigniting their machinery. Um, it is also good, I am told, that the city has stabilized, and uh, that works well for importers as well as exporters. All in all, um, I'm sure we could find reason to lament our situation, but um, we either want to see it as half full or half, half empty. And I believe that I, I, I was extremely impressed about this poise. I was happy about this message. I liked the, 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 the pathos of his message, which was that we are a world equal and we are here to tell you a story. I think that... Um, rather than wait for the occasional world pariah like Mugabe to come out and say things and instantly be um, relegated with some funny allegations. It's important that every African leader, when they arrive on the world stage, actually behave as equals. You see, sometimes a legal system will, ad will accord you a, an equal status, but you have to assert it from right. time to time. And I think that I, I was... I was, I was very proud of it, and I, I congratulate I'm, you. I'm grateful, Ricky. Uh, Dr. Watnyajenim, now, the president assured of uh, a peaceful uh, elections, a free and fair one. Uh, we started not too well with uh, issues that had to do with the Electoral Commission, and uh, there were times that uh, some parties were not too happy at what uh, the EC uh, was building up ahead of December 7th. At least, from where we're sitting now, the president has told a story perhaps of the EC that had been able to deal with these issues and we're, we're ready for December 7. I think it's quite interesting that, uh, what the president uh, said about peaceful uh, elections or uh, having free and fair pool. Mm. Uh, I believe this will happen because we have done it before. Uh, although we had instances of people losing trust in EC at some point because of the time frame and the various measures they had to put in place before, uh, particularly when it was suggested November 7th uh, election. Mm. Uh, but now it seems to have cooled down. That is not to say that there are not some issues that uh, shouldn't be addressed. I think we need to, uh, EC still has to I uh, educate people really very well because there seems to be some pockets of issues coming up every now and then. And I believe we will have free, fair elections and all the economic indicators, if I should touch on that uh, briefly, uh, indicate that uh, possibly we might be doing okay. But then uh, if you bring it down to, hmm, to the pockets, to, to the pockets <laughs> as Ricky said, uh, it, it says something completely different because the, the, the need of the people as compared to what the economic indicators are giving are quite contrasting. Uh, if you look at the fact that for somebody living in the village, say my parents or parents living in the village, all that they possibly will be looking out for is very good roads, they have very stable prices for their produce. If you talk about couple beginning life, uh, they are thinking about just something very, very basic, such that they can save and then in future own their, their, their first house. I, I mean, if you look at all these indicators in terms of what we are feeling now, talk about a student who is uh, finishing, he's thinking about landing the first job. Mm -hmm. These basic ones, in, in my opinion, are not really very good for us at the moment. But then some of the economic indicators like the stable city, 
uh, for the past uh, uh, one year or so mm. show that we might be doing well, but possibly we are not doing very well in our pockets. Mm. I'm grateful. Uh, no, no, uh, and for, for the economy, the, the critics of the president sharply disagrees that this is an economy that is resilient uh, and doing well. But he's told the UN that this is indeed what the situation is. And uh, Ricky and Dr. Bwaknejini simply are saying that, look, the indicators might be right, but we don't have it in our pocket. Oh, thank you, Bright. Mm. Uh, first and foremost, um, I would like to congratulate the president mm. for an incredible delivery. I think um, <clears throat> if he went there to market Ghana, he did an excellent job. Everything that he said was very much on point in terms of marketing, and I choose the word marketing. Um, when it comes to reality, that is a whole different story. I think our economy um, is in a real mess, if you look at the economic indicators. 2009, mm. our total debt was close to $9 billion. Even if you take the exchange rate at one CD to one dollar, that would be nine billion. As at now, our total debt hovers around close to about a hundred billion. So we, as a country, are retrogressing in terms of our economic progress. Economics, Just by the debt, on the debt issue. Mm. If you look at inflation, um, uh, 2012 inflation was about 9.1 percent. As we speak today, inflation is around 19%. If you look at um, the CD to dollar exchange rate, 2012 it was close to about two CDs. Now it is about four Ghana CDs to the dollar. So all the economic indicators, of none of them are favorable. For the yes, first sir. time in our budget last year, government even reduced funding to agriculture, which is supposed to be in the mainstay of close to about 60% of the population. And if you look at the budget deficit last year, uh, it's all about debt financing. Government does not have the structures in place to collect enough revenue to be able to sustain its expenditure. And it's a combination of things. Commodity prices have fallen, especially oil, which mm -hmm. was forecasted at about $100 to the barrel. Um, was closing sometime around thirty to forty dollars a barrel. So obviously, government's revenue targets were almost reduced by about fifty percent. So government has really struggled to bridge the expenditure and revenue gap. And when you have a situation like that, you need to come up with very radical measures, and that lends credence to most of the taxes that were levied on Ghanaians from the twenty sixteen budget. The IMF has come in. And now they control our fiscal and financial management systems. They are helping us with sustaining our currency mm -hmm. by propping up our foreign reserves, which is positive. The issue, however, is people keep on wondering and blaming ECG for all these billing that people think are incorrect or too high. Somebody has to pay for the cost of Kapoha and Ameri. Somebody has to pay for the total cost of bringing all these energies, which are supposed to be short term, which have become long term. Somebody has to pay. And at the end of the day, it is you and I, Bright, mm. who have to pay for that. So ECG is not making any mistakes in their billing. There are no mistakes whatsoever. Even with the changes we have seen? The, when, the, uh, so, when the realignment there was, was a done. software glitch right and they had to actually modify their software mm. but at the end of the day it did not reduce or eliminate anybody's account mine was not i am now paying close to about 1200 ghana cities a month for ecg and before i was paying close to about 600 ghana cities so in my case it has gone up by about 100%. Mm. And I know why. S the total cost of producing energy, which we now seem to be enjoying, some, it has to be captured and it has to be passed on. The IMF will not allow government to subsidize nor take a portion and say, Ghanaians, let me cushion the impact for you. 
it's a free fall, it's a free market economy, and therefore it's the end user who must pay for the total cost of energy. Mm. So I think on the issue of the, gov the president's address on the economy, much as I think he did a good job in marketing Ghana, I think the, the reality on the ground is totally different on what was purported or what he said. Because our GDP growth last year was about 3.9%. Mm. This year, I doubt very much if we can even get closer to the 39 4.9? 4.9. target. The end There's no way we are going to get to 4.9 this year. If you look at inflation, government is assuming that inflation is going to end at 10.1%. The now inflation is at 19%, is going to get worse, especially with an election year where we are going to spend so much on billboards, campaigns, doling out gifts and cash to people. It's just going to heat up the already heated market and, and, sh and make the money supply go higher than the demand. So for you, it's not an economy that is on the path of transformation, as Mr. Tekbet told Parliament? You know, right. Um, I have issues with the way we present our facts. And I'll give you a quick example. Last year, Cocoa Board borrowed $1.8 billion, the mm -hmm. same $1.8 billion, mm -hmm. at 1.19%. 1.19%. This year, we are borrowing the same $1.8 billion at 1.47%. Mm. That is an increase of 25% on the interest. So why would Cocoa Board come out as if they've done the greatest thing to Ghanaians and then this very important part of the finances not presented at, well, by the way, we borrowed at this incremental <laughs> cost. And it is all because of the debt profile of Ghana. That has gone to now affect even mm. state-owned enterprises who go onto the world market to borrow. We just borrowed 750 million sometime last week at 9.5 percent for a period of five years. Five years, bright. Who in the world can afford to do that? Last year we borrowed the same 750 million at 10.75%, but over a 15-year period. So there's one thing we've coming out to say, oh, we borrowed at 10.75 last year, but we are borrowing at 9.5%, but then match it properly so that people can make mm. an informed decision. So on the economy, there's one thing with what Donorabo Setepe will come out and present to Parliament and try and seem to be in control of the financial and fiscal uh, management system in Ghana, which he is not, because if he was, he wouldn't be making comments like even going ahead to tax pensions. Who taxes pensions? Pensions, pensioners' monies are even protected by the law. I think that and it took was, the was president. I'm saying it took the law. president mm -hmm. to come in to correct that, and it almost always appears that ministers who are supposed to be in charge of the sectors that they have been mandated to manage goof up and it almost always takes the president to come up and clean mm. behind them which mm. is unfair because okay. it creates unnecessary <coughs> attention on the president so and i think that if the president was minded to look at some of his ministers he needs to really speak to most of them because invariably the information he gets is what he goes out to present and if he was told that our economy uh, our GDP growth grew at 3.9% last year, and we may have to revise it between 3.5 or 3.6 this year. He wouldn't go out there and say that GDP growth is targeted at 4.9. Mm, okay. I'm grateful, Nana. Let's a, a bit more on the economy before we, we move for another issue. Ricky, but you suggested at least um, the indicators are right, but Nana doesn't seem to agree that the indicators are right. See, or uh, some of them are right, let's put it that way. Let's remind ourselves that I pleaded uh, very pedantry knowledge Great. in... Uh, Great. Now, Nana makes a, a statement that there was a reduced funding for agriculture last year. Mm. That uh, I cannot contest. But I also know that the road network, if it is improved upon, 
is going to contribute largely to the delivery it of agri on yeah, exactly agri products the movement of agri products it probably would also with the current stabilization of the electricity regime that is also going to help in storage the point i'm trying to make here is that wh what do we normally make these comparisons with and i i would not dare go into things like inflation and gdp because i do not have that knowledge mm -hmm. All I'm saying is that if I look at the beginning of this year, I was living in this country, I've been living in, the, in this country this year, the situation in which this country was, where several companies and manufacturing establishments closed down, and with the very obvious laying off of staff and people not being able to meet their basic because needs of the power because crisis. of the power crisis. Now, Nana will tell us that there is some company, car power or somewhere, that they have to, you know, readjust so that they can meet these, these uh, uh, commitments. Mm. I'm afraid uh, I may be saying something that will sound unpopular. But Ghanaians are not terribly concerned about the cost of electricity as much as the, the frequency, or should I say the stability of electricity. I, my, my electricity bill has increased about the same proportion. But at least I know now that whatever I store in my freezer, in my fridge, is safe. So would I rather be paying what we call the real price for electricity and be sure that I don't have to um, wake up in the morning and be scrambling because I don't have a shed to go to work because there's no electricity? We will need to make a, 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 an analysis. And I want to say the street man's analysis. So, and as for debt profile and et cetera, et cetera, I've always tempted to be the common man that I am. And I say simply that there is no money in our pockets, literally. Mm -hmm. I don't know if ever there was in, before I was born, but um, life has always pretty much been about just managing to, that's why Ghanaians are supposed to be magicians. It okay. was said in the 80s and it was said in the 90s. I'm not sure the situation has changed. Mm -hmm. So I'm worried that we, 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 we arrest a certain regime and tell them that they are performing terribly, as though there was a golden era of a time. I'm almost 50 years, and Ghana has not been radically better, was it? In the threshold has been same. Yes, We've pretty never much. Gone past the threshold. Exactly. Was it under a champong? I was a kid. Was it under Kufu? I don't know what was happening. Was it under the AFRC or the PNDC? So when we are talking of ind these indicators, they've really never meant anything for me. But there was a time that it took me three days to travel from my village in S to come to Accra. Today, to use hours. That is what I understand. There were, when I went to secondary school in Nandom, I used a hurricane lantern <laughs> with diesel. Today, the young men, and uh, it's a boys' school, are using, they have electricity. I finished university before I got contact physically with a computer. Today, everybody's walking around with a mini computer by way of a phone. Mm. That is my pedestrian understanding of whether we are making progress mm. or not. Those who are better educated in the economic indices and all the high polluting, you know, they can say that. Mm. So I want to plead, you know, uh, right. <laughs> out of this particular one. Yeah. Okay. Ricky, I'm grateful. Uh, Dr. Barton, let, let, let's wrap up on this one. So the, the indicators... Uh, to some are not showing positive signs but uh, does it mean that we're totally uh, in a messy situation I'm not an economic guru either I'm just an engineer who understand figures but even the economic figures how it is calculated I don't even understand mm. I must say because uh, one of the most important things in Ghana, which makes everything so complex and not very understandable, is the fact that even how it is calculated and the figures that will be used, the results will depend on whether it is Baumia presenting it or it is uh, uh, the vice president attempting to present it. So some of these indicators are really very good for the economists. But when it comes to us, the laymen, mm. 
as Ricky will say, Ricky, if you are 50, then you are <laughs> really very <laughs> handsome man. <laughs> as Ricky will say, then it is uh, really uh, uh, down to how much we have in our pocket. But I cannot end it up if you bring in energy mm. and I don't say anything. Mm. We're talking about stabilization of electricity. I have had my doubts all along. I think I have been bullied to uh, believe that at, at some point I made mention of the fact that this thing has not gone away. They're doing mm. so, and I still believe it has not gone away because it is just like when you have a stomach ache and you have a plaster on top. Okay, that is exactly what we're doing. We are not actually solving the energy problem, but rather we are attempting to temporarily provide a kind of solution. Because I don't know if God has promises that we're going to get water throughout the year to run the Akosombo Dam as we're doing now. We're bringing in power, uh, uh, barges and others which, uh, for which we have signed contracts for 10 years and we still call them emergency power plants. So there are so many wrongs when it comes to Ameri and uh, what is the other one, car power. Mm. Uh, and so the energy situation and what we are enjoying now i think it is only temporary it is a matter of time because we have not solved it this might possibly not be the platform to go into the nitty-gritty of why it's not being solved because we are relying on someone else to run the country mm. to have civilization of energy which is never going to happen mm. i'm grateful now, uh, let's uh, uh, go to the Ghanaian Times and uh, take a look at this story. We'll tie that story in with what's on the business find that later on. The Cocoa Board secures 1.8 billion loan, dollar loan for purchases. The story uh, says that um, uh, the Ghana Cocoa Board has uh, secured uh, 1.8 billion uh, loan facility for the purchase of cocoa beans from farmers for the 2016-2017 crop season. Now, uh, when the crop, uh, when the cocoa plant perform better and require further funds, the arrangement allows for an additional two hundred million dollars uh, to rack up the figure to two billion dollars. The facility comes with an all-inclusive rate of one point four eight percent, with a four-month moratorium and a seven-month repayment period, which could commence in February next year. The amount, which was raised by a consortium of twenty-four banks, mostly from Germany, was oversubscribed by $640 million. So 2015-2016, uh, uh, the same was done, and it was settled last uh, month. Uh, the, uh, Dr. Puni, who uh, is in charge of the sector, says uh, government is making frantic efforts to support cocoa farmers to address issues that are impacting negatively on cocoa production. So uh, he assured that the 850,000 target for the 2016-2017 season will be met. Now, now let me start with you. For, since 92, we have embarked on, on this journey of borrowing to buy cocoa beans. Is it the best? Absolutely not right. We are borrowing to pay interest. We are borrowing to pay principal on loans. We are borrowing to even borrow. We've reached a point where the borrowing appetite of government in terms of the domestic debt mm. has now pushed interest rates for the commercial banks between 32 to 35 percent. We've reached a point where Ghana now has the most enviable record of issuing the largest interest rated denominated bonds in the euro bond market. Last year's 10.75% broke all existing records. And when a government is perceived to be at risk, now Moody's rates our, bond, our bonds hmm. at B. B means highly specific highly speculative, non-investment grade, and it's just a polite terminology for junk rated bonds. When a country has that profile, it also affects the institutions within it. That is why somebody would say that, you know, if, uh, if you look at the son, you can see, if you see the son, you can see the father in him. 
and that is the reason why even though it's the same quantity it's the same amount it's the same debt that we went to the same people from last year to this year mm. the interest rate that we were given as far as cocoa board jumped up from 1.19 percent in 2015 to 1.47 percent in 2016. for eight for eight mm. in 2016. the second point is the target we did close to about 700,000 metric tons last year what have we done so differently what impact in terms of additional crops that are coming onto the market because the issue with cocoa we need to have a very radical and structural change is the, 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 the people who are doing the farming are still our grandfathers very elderly people mm. using the same tools that were being used about 50 to 100 years ago the the trees are very old i mean if you look at South, um, uh, ivory coast and ghana and you compare the yield per hectare it tells you what the what is what the problem is our yield is so low because of the old trees which have been the same trees that have been bearing fruit for about 20 30 years so we would need to really adjust the structural changes in the cocoa seedlings and also trying to get not just the youth mm. because how do you get the gestation period for for cocoa to turn around is between five to seven years i'm um, so we have a new uh, breed that i think uh, uh, best fruits faster than we used to yes oh. but the traditional One. is between five to seven mm -hmm. now if you want youth to go into agriculture you're going into areas and telling chiefs to make land available for the youth to go into cocoa these are some of the policies of cocoa board appealing to chiefs to make land available now if the chief can sell this land to a chinese galamse operator or an investor who wants to come and buy land and use why would this chief allow his land to be just taken up and given to youth to do agriculture it doesn't work like that anymore you don't expect a youth who has completed either junior secondary school or senior high school to go and live somewhere in the village for five years and farm cocoa without making any provision as to his allowances his upkeep and how he's going to provide for himself hmm. during that period so there's one thing with providing seedlings for the youth but that does not necessarily translate into the youth jumping into agriculture and boosting productivity. I doubt very much that we'll be able to achieve even more than 700,000 metric tons this year. I doubt very much. The main season is next month. Opening I doubt month. very much. And with the erratic supply of rain, with the harvest not coming in as it's supposed to come in, with the impact of fertilizers which are not getting to the farmers and the spraying which has literally been abandoned and subjected most cocoa farmers to the agony of pests and diseases with galamse, galamse operators getting into farming cocoa communities just cutting them down with impunity without any sanctions or arrest the already precarious cocoa harvest is also going to be negatively affected by some of these practices so when we go out there to borrow on the assumption that we are going to bring in between 800 to 900 thousand metric tons mm. and that is the basis of the cocoa when one we don't control the world prices of cocoa and two we seem to have lost the fight in jumping over 700 thousand metric tons and now cocoa board has now become the feeder road department for the cocoa growing areas. Cocoa Board now believes that doing the road network to the cocoa areas should be their preserve, and they are doing that. Yes, it could be a positive catalyst to ensure that cocoa is carted, mm. but perhaps if they could arrange to deal with feeder roads who are mandated by government to do this, as opposed to the appearance that Cocoa Board is using this as another avenue for the perception of corruption 
which has permeated the system so much. It would at least vindicate or remove Cocoa Board from doing something which technically it is not mandated to do. So there's one thing with coming in and saying that Cocoa Board has secured 1.8 million, which we have been doing since 1992. Right. What stops us? What happens to all the profits? What happens to all the banks locally from putting together a consortium the ever every year the profits that we make from cocoa which sometimes is about 100 percent in the international market mm. since 1992 and we still have to go to the market to borrow it's embarrassing and Ghanaians, it's sad that yesterday was the founder's day for farming chroma but i'm sure in his grave if he should read about this mm. he'll be turning upside down comfortably I'm grateful, Nana, for your time. Uh, Dr. Boatine so 92 uh, to now, uh, we go in there to take the load. Can, can, we, can we raise, can we put together, or are we able to put together $1.8 billion to do these uh, purchases locally? I do not actually know the amounts involved when it comes to uh, how much they are borrowing. Uh, 1.8 billion. 1.8 billion. Yes. If you do the calculation based on 1.8 billion and we can make a, a profit 100% of 100%, profit. then 1.8 billion multiplied by 20, in that case, is a significant amount. It's two times 20, so close to about 40 million. Uh, 40, 40 billion. Then, I think it makes sense we could have generated this if we had looked at this. But this is just a basic calculation of how uh, we could have saved. But my concern has not only been with Cocoa Board. My concern has been with the wider Guinean uh, approach to doing things. We're talking about Cocoa Board, but it is not very, very different from how uh, the finance ministry has even been developing their own budget. They, year in, year out, there is a huge difference between revenue and expenditure. Mm. I, I, I don't know much about budgets, how they are done. I only know about doing simple ones for my faculty and others. <laughs> but if I uh, look at the fact that Ghana is made up of aggregates of individual homes, and I run my home similar to how the Ghanaian budget, budget is, is done, then I possibly think that I will end up in, in, in Isawam. <laughs> yes, because look, year in, year out. There's a deficit. Yes, there is a deficit. <laughs> and we are always looking up to, I really can't understand, looking up to foreign investment or whatever to make up that deficit. I took the trouble, look at the last 20 years, the budget, the budgets. You, this is very, very basic to me. Revenue is always lower than expenditure. Mm -hmm. Imagine my salary per year or annually is 2,000 Ghana cities. And then I budget for 3,000 for 20 years. For the last 20 years with interest, possibly, I will be, I will be, I'll, I'll be in jail. <laughs> so, so there are some things, the economic things, uh, indicators and others that sometimes when I bring it down to the ordinary person, I really don't understand. So for me, what Cocoa Board is doing is just a good replica of what the country has been doing for years. And again, I will ask the question, how different is it from that of GMPC? I remember there was a lot of uh, hulu balu about GMPC going out there to borrow. Mm. I didn't know that Cocoa Board continues to borrow every year since 1992. So what is the difference? Why were we making noise about GMPC <coughs> having the, the independence to go and borrow mm. as against Cocoa Board that has been borrowing uh, since 92, which is 16 years, 26 or 24 years ago? I don't, I I don't understand. That's a, a huge question. I don't understand. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ricky, I, and uh, Dr. Opini, Opini talks about the fact that um, Issues like aging cocoa farmers, uh, overaged uh, farms, the youth uh, who are not interested in going uh, to uh, into cocoa farming. Now, these uh, issues government is working to deal with, and he thinks that these challenges are being addressed. My brother, um, I'm not going to 
concern myself with that immediately. Mm. I'm just worried about state-run corporations. Cocoa Board, by my simple understanding, has been a failure for this period. If you cannot buy your primary product yourself and sell, you have no business being in the business. Pure and simple. Why we continue, I don't know, whether it's a colonial hangover, we feel sad that Ghana Airways has gone and maybe now Cocoa Board will also go. We may have to just wake up from our slumber. 19, this is a, an interesting revelation. I didn't know. Okay. Every year, we religiously go and borrow a sum of money, come and buy the cocoa, pretend that we are in charge, sell it, and for some reason, we don't make profits, and then we are cleaning up shop to go and borrow no, again. I think we make profits. Well, that's for the profit well, we the, do. You see, if we are making profits, <laughs> nobody's mentioned it, so right. we don't want to go there. Okay. For, you know. But the point is, I'm happy paradoxically, that this started in 1992 and mm. went through the NDC in 1992 and went through the MPP, MPP. <laughs> and now it's back to the NDC. So thankfully, this is something on which nobody is particularly going to be held responsible. So as a nation, we've just got to wake up. I've heard noises about Shia Nut Board. What has become of it? Is it one of the political uh, promises? Mm. Now, the, you mentioned feeder roads. And what immediately came to my mind is we have got a lot of moribund organizations in this country. You know we still have state construction corporation? Yes, we have. SEC. Yes. We still have state housing corporation? Yes. yes. We still have non-formal education? They're all there. They're all, <laughs> I, I don't know why we, we are interested in having uh, an elaborate machinery when either they are not working or they are being starved of funds or they have been replaced or overlapped by other ministries. The reason why I'm not going to go to Dr. Opuni's stories, what are you going to do about aging farmers? Give them injections to reduce their age? <laughs> no. It's just because the whole prospect of being a cocoa farmer is not a very enticing. We have inherited an educational system and a world outlook that gives every young man, a pro he wants to wear a tie. He wants to be in the city. He wants to now drive a Range Rover. Range Rovers have become cheaper than Beatles <laughs> in this country. I mean, more than Beatles. Um, Essentially, there is no way anybody is going to go and say, oh, look, let me go to the village and farm cocoa, and hopefully in five years, I will produce cocoa. And hopefully, the government will go and get a loan and then come and buy it from me. There are too many ifs, ifs, ifs. But where does it send me to? It sends me to our politicians. Instead of us pitching ourselves into two opposing groups and uh, bad-mouthing each other and finding fault with each other, we are collectively a disgrace. Kwame Nkrumah wouldn't be reading in his grave. He would be feeling it through his veins, if they still are. It's a complete embarrassment that we inherited an elaborate, proud heritage. And every single day, we have got more and more educated people, experts, and we can't even keep our ship running. So for me, this is just symptomatic of the general quagmire that this country is being run. And I'm not going to bother about making it an NDC problem or an MPP problem. Like this clearly demonstrates, we've been borrowing from 1992. And I'm sure there have been several efforts to regenerate a Greek. There were times when we we, we, we cut agri to fisheries and, and something, aquaculture, and, aquaculture, and, and we, we keep remodeling ministries. We, it is, for example, another thing is, once upon a time, we had a ministry for the beautification of the city, and that didn't work. Then we had a presidential special initiative on cleanliness. It didn't work. The whole point is, and I've said in my private uh, circumstances, and I'm a conspiracy theorist. I believe in it. I believe I, I, it, it appeals to me. I believe that the political elite of this country have consciously divided themselves into two apparently opposing groups. And they're taking turns at hoodwinking the masses into giving them the chances to, uh, quote unquote, rape this country. Pure. Because tomorrow, let PPP come in. It's not going to be different. It's NDC. It's MP MPP, it is not going to be different because fundamentally our attitude towards our country is one that we, 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 sh we, are not, we shouldn't be proud of. And right, just to add to, okay, that, quick just one. to add to that, you know, it's interesting he said that. The NPP 
in 2000 campaigned. One of their major campaign mm. issues was that they were going to ensure the election of DCs. When they took office in 2000, that idea just disappeared overnight. So manifestos, promises, campaign, campaign issues almost always die out the moment the person finds himself in that elevated seat. So I totally agree with you, Rick. Mm. I'm grateful. Now, let's look at this story on the Daily uh, Guide. It says, Muhammad shares cash. The story is suggesting that uh, there's a, a video footage that has surfaced on social media in which the president is seen standing in his open top V8 Toyota Land Cruiser and doling out cash to people in the streets during a campaign tour of the Great Accra region. Um, uh, the paper says in that video, the presidential convoy is seen moving at a snail pace on the street of Savon Zongo at Abosoka, with, with President Mahama sporting a white cap on top of a black colored t shirt and responding to cheers from admirers. Now, as the crowd cheered on, he beckoned someone from the crowd to come and ordered his driver to stop. Uh, he's then seen reaching out for money from the vehicle and giving it out to the person who meandered his way through the crowd amidst tight security to take the money. Uh, the story again goes on to say that um, a few people were also beckoned to come and uh, they also received cash from uh, the president. Dr. Boatnijinim, let me quickly come in, start with you here on this. Now, this issue of uh, vote buying, uh, can we, are we able to stop it? Is the electorate uh, at a, able to perhaps uh, stop this practice? I think they will be the persons to stop it. Unfortunately, no. I think it's going to continue because this has been there for years and for decades and it depends on how the people perceive it normally when it is money sharing i am not very sure if the president comes to any of these university campuses uh in his open top v8 uh, uh, toyota land cruiser he will ever give money to anyone it is always targeted at particular places. If he goes to the village and they shout 50 Ghana cities, sadly, it will be seen as the president supporting them but or any other political party, but they will not look at it from mm. the point of view that this is not something that is sustainable and that I will not sell my vote for 50 cities for four years. That is not how people will look at it. They will look at it as being a national cake that the president is dishing, and they are even lucky mm. to have been beckoned to come for money from the whole president. So, so do, do, they, said, they don't think it's vote buying? No, some of them will not look at it from that angle. That said, we should also be very, very careful in drawing such conclusions. If it is not a political rally, I go to my village, I give out money. It does not mean that I am buying anybody's vote. So the, our, traditionally, we are also used to supporting the vulnerable. Sometimes even people who, are, who do not belong to uh, 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 our families, or they are not part of our families or friends, we still dish out money. But in this case, he was doing it possibly during a political rally, mm. and that is what makes it worrying, if it is true. Uh, and it, he's not only doing that, sorry, he's not the only person doing that, sorry. Uh, the other political parties are equally uh, are doing this. It is only that in this case it was captured uh, in a video. Allegedly. Uh, yes, allegedly, sorry. Allegedly it was captured in a video, but... Mm. Uh, other political parties are doing the same. It's just like the promises that uh, Nana was talking about. The whole country has become uh, 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 political parties giving all sorts of promises, including supporting people. Which political party has not promised to build roads in Ghana? Which did not uh, promise to improve on the education uh, in, in Ghana? Which political party did not talk about improving monies in our pockets in Ghana? They all did. But at the end, if you look at the political promises that have been made mm. since Kwame Nkrumah's day, if we had even executed 10%, Ghana would be a developed country. 
whether they don't know the enormity of the programs or they just want to deceive us into voting them into power. And when they come to power, it then becomes uh, comparisons and excuses. They begin to es give excuses that Ghana has not got this, I didn't know this, and then they be the next thing is let us compare ourselves to the previous administration. We did this, and MPP did this, and we have done better, uh, NDC did this, and we have done better. It's become too much of political promises and deceit, and the, the, it, it's become a high time that we stop all this. And the electorate can help us a lot because that 50 Ghana seed is given to uh, whoever is not going to sustain you for four years. Divide four years by 50 or, cities. Uh, or 50 cities by four years. And uh, you realize that for one day, it will be 0.00, .00 something uh, uh, pesos. It can't even buy Isn't uh, it? Uh, chewing gum. So why would you buy my vote for, 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 okay. for, for 50 right. cities? Right. Ricky, so uh, how do we deal with this problem? Um, right. <clears throat> in 1992, when I had the privilege of being taught by Mr. Kofidra, uh, political science in the University of Ghana, I remember um, quite succinctly him saying that political science has been bereft of any new um, theory. And the only one that came into light was Patreon clientelism, which is what happens in African politics. Please calm down. They are, yeah. they are engineers here. Uh, the, the patron clientelism here basically means that you, I am an MP. I make sure that I, I take care of somebody in my constituency, maybe the uh, chairman. The chairman then makes sure that he takes care of certain people. So those people are voting for me because if they vote for me, I can take care of the chairman. And when the chairman is there, he can take care of them. So they don't really care, concern themselves with policies. Now, another thing that comes to mind is give the people what they want. It's an egg and chicken business. If we, if we want to concern ourselves with this, we'll talk till the, the, the hens come back to roost. What is the point telling the truth when the people don't want to hear the truth? We've been fed fat lies. We've been fed illusions, fantasies. And somehow, we gullibly take those fantasies and go and vote the people in. Take, you go, Brad, you and I, let's go to my constituency. And you tell them you want to bring the rule of law. You want to make sure that any parent that does not send his child to school is going to be sent to court. Lord have mercy, where is this man coming from? But I'm going to tell them, you know what? I'm going to, all the bald-headed people are going to have hair when I come into, and they are going to vote for me. <laughs> that is the culture that we have, uh, we have brought uh, to, into being. So a politician is not a moralistically very astute person. A politician's end is power by any means necessary. Many of them are variants of Machiavelli. If it is, I don't believe that the president actually handed money out. I am not saying that the president doesn't do vote buying. I'll be terribly disappointed if he actually removed money and gave publicly. Mm. There, are so, the there are so many other ways that vote buying is going on. You know, um, like for example, uh, giving all chiefs brand new land cruises every four years, just so that it, it is almost coincidental with election year. I mean, I respect Chief. My late dad was a chief. I'm sh I hope he was around to <laughs> get one of these land cruises. But the point here is, I do not think that the president actually did this. And if you look in the article, it says that, oh, the person who filmed it was an amateur f uh, person. It's just a little caveat if, in case uh, somebody comes out to say, in fact, it was cooked up. Essentially, vote buying is going to continue, like Doc said. It's going to continue because the person who receives the 50 cities is receiving it not because they think their vote is 50 cities. It's because that's their only chance at getting something from this country. That is their only chance. If you go to the hospital with your NHIS card, you probably can only get paracetamol. You can't get any antibiotic. You can't get anything else. So if the man arrives and he says, take a, a new, a new T-shirt, and take 50 cities. What am I supposed to do? No, 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 no. I know my rights, I know my principles, and he goes away, and he still gets voted. So the people are realists. You and I are speaking grammar. These people realize that their only chance, look, my late grandma used to say that she wished we voted every year. 
<laughs> and I was like, why on earth would you want us to vote every year? He said, well, you see, the thing is, every year, at least, the young ladies get sewing machines, uh, the young men get <laughs> motorbikes, and we get T-shirts, and those of you who like to drink get gallons of a petition. And then you have to wait four years until they come. So if they do it every year. But my area, Domi, they've made the road. They've asphalted it. Believe me, if we're voting next year, they will extend it. Okay. The point is, the people have been reduced to beggars. This social contract where we are giving them the power it's to working. work for us is it's a complete mirage. Uh, Ricky, I'm grateful. Another wrap-up from you on this. All right. I think the issue is with education. We um, can stop it? We can. For example, a starting point, the media. I think the media has a very important role to play. A manifesto was just given out by the NDC. What I wish the, man, what the media would do is take the 2012 manifesto, look at what was achieved, and then compare it to this 2016 manifesto. Mm. That is what the public need to see, where if you are in any functional company, you look at the budget, you compare it to the actual, and then you do an analysis on the variance to determine what went wrong and what should be fixed. Unfortunately, all that we read about was the 2016 manifesto of the NDC, and there was no attempt by the media to compare that to the 2012 manifesto. Mm. And I wish one of these days would be invited to this platform to just oppose the two and have a very honest, blunt, and realistic discussion about that. Because what the people are promised is almost hogwash compared to what is delivered to them, almost always. And I think the moment political parties start realizing that whatever they are going to put out in their campaign messages and their manifesto, there will be a day of reckoning, perhaps. First, that they make, and secondly, it will also make them accountable. So the has a role to play to ensure that people are fed with the information as if going out and giving somebody 50 Ghana cities or 20 Ghana cities, or if you look at what ministers of state have been doing lately, outdoor boats for fishermen, um, gas cylinders, uh, fishing nets, motorbikes, as if it's Christmas all over again. Mm. With our economy the way it is, with our debt profile, with the government for the first time taxing literally everything just to bridge the gap between expenditure and revenue this is not the time for government to go on a spending spree so if elections keep on following this pattern where Ghanaians now decide to vote on three basic lines what are you bringing to me which tribe are we coming from which religion lately are we also affiliated to mm. these three pivots are dangerous to our democracy and will not inure to the long-term benefit of the electorate i'm grateful nana uh, frederick mapambo is chairman of invest pro limited uh, dr francis boatney jenim is uh, an energy expert and ricky kasi Sipepra is a fan of youth enterprise development network uh, gentlemen i'm grateful for your time this morning Thanks so Thank much you. for coming. 